staying with us. Uh, but right now, we'll go to River State as it is. River's local government poll is what we're concentrating on. Tension arises as Fubara and Wiki um, uh, are head-to-head -head like na right now over what should happen. Ahead of the local government poll slated for 5th of October in River State, which eventually is tomorrow, there is a rise in tension as PDP supporters protest against Governor Fubara for planning to continue with the elections despite court orders. This protest is coming just after Fubara announced that nothing will stop the election and urged INEC to proceed with the elections. Several other conflicting court orders in recent months have also been seen as part of the escalating tensions between Fubara and Wiki supporters. Our guest this morning is Mr. Gutswill Jumbo, the publisher, Christina Reports. Good morning and welcome to the show, Mr. Jumbo. Yes, good morning. It's nice to be here again. Okay. All right. Um, it's usually very interesting talking about River State. It's like, you know, like I was saying off camera, it's like it's uh, Act 1, since thir uh, scene 30 we are in now. There is one week, one problem that we are always having from River State. Now, elections will happen tomorrow. They're supposed to happen in t uh, tomorrow. Uh, walk us through how that is going to be a possibility. Okay, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that within the Nigerian states, we have a situation where shenanigans of uh, different politicians can just happen without any form of restraint, without any form of containment uh, plan. Uh, in fact, even the, the state institutions that should contain the situation are now becoming, you know, culpable, you know, so to speak. Uh, but uh, let's look at uh, in July, I think July about 19th or so, uh, Justice Lifu of the Federal High Court gave a restraining order to INEC not to release voters register, uh, the police and other security agencies not to provide security or be involved with the election. And then by 6th of, 6th of uh, September, uh, Justice Igwe of the River State High Court now gave uh, the green light for the River State Independent Electoral Commission to go ahead with the election, compelling the security agencies uh, as statutorily mandatory on them, you know, to provide security as provided by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And then, you know, uh, last night, about midnight, the police issued a statement that uh, they are pulling out of the elections. They won't be providing security, and that that's what their legal department has advised, you know. And then this morning, the governor woke all of us up to some hoodlum activities, you know, reportedly by the police. And then we are seeing pictures, you know, flooding the media space of policemen being uh, drafted from one of the neighboring states you know, to the research uh, office, which is actually strange. If uh, the police is to deploy any of his personnel there, I mean, it should uh, do a formal communication to the commission, but this, uh, we understand, did not happen, you know. And then the governor has asserted that the elections will hold and that whatever Justice Lifu has, you know, uh, given as an order, that is uh, as per the police, that the, the states as a federating unit within the Nigerian context, the Nigerian polity, will not be needing the services of the police. That elections will go on. And he has encouraged members, the people of the state, to go out on Saturday to vote. And then we saw yesterday some people drawn from the PDP and a faction of the APC protesting. Now, you begin to wonder, what are they protesting? The Supreme Court has ruled that all statutory allocations to the local government should only go to elected and elected government at the grassroots level. Mm. And now the state government wants to comply with the three months window that the Supreme Court has given, you know, in tandem with the federal government for all states to make sure that the writing is done. And then you are protesting that the election should not hold. And the curious part is that both parties, the PDP, has stated that it will not participate in the election. And then the faction of the APC that is also protesting has said they won't participate in the election. So what are you protesting? 
You say you don't want to eat the garia, the, the bar, and the uh, forio, and then you are still complaining that uh, the soup, the food, nobody should eat it. Ah, uh, I mean, isn't that strange? You know, but then the governor is determined that the elections are going to hold. If the police does not provide uh, security, you know, that's fine. There are other security agencies that can provide that security. And by the way, do grassroots elections even need uh, security? Several countries around Africa and different parts of the world have had election. We didn't hear of any noise. People just go and vote and go to their houses. And there is no much ado. Why is Nigeria every time election, there is tension, there is confusion and all of that. But I'm sure uh, tomorrow's election will be a litmus test if Nigeria is actually going in the direction of progress. It's going to happen in River State, and we, the media community, will be on standby to provide the world with uh, all the updates they need to show whether the election held or not. But I think I need to, you know, maybe throw in an advice for to the minister of the FCT. He, should call, he himself should restrain himself, and then he should restrain his supporters and followers. There is, this is your state. The, the continuous attempt to circumvent governance in the states is an embarrassment to you as a person. And being a former governor is an embarrassment. He should have some measure of decorum for himself. He should restrain himself. He should restrain his followers. What is all this noise about your state? Anambra has done local government election, no noise. Imo has done, no noise. Akwaibo is about doing, no noise. Why is River State the center of all the noise? I mean, somebody should be able to tell him, somebody close by who he listens to should be able to tell him, Oga, respect yourself, small. You know, this is your state. Till tomorrow, even after you have died, this is the only state you will be identified with. You should work with the current administration, which even you yourself work to install. You should work with it and make things happen. At the end of the day, who gains, who loses in all of this? Is it your ego? Is it your your your, your uh, 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 personal aggrandizement? Is, is that what you want? Will that be what the, the legacy you are bequeathing on coming generations? You want that story to be told 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years after you are gone, that you mustard all efforts to circumvent governance in your own home state. Is that a record you want to keep? So I think he needs to call himself to order. What is all this? You know, and but then for the people of the state, it's time to show their resolve. At the end of the day, democracy is about the people. And the people of River State should be able to show that this is their state. They should own the process. Own it's not about the governor and about his uh political godfather. It is about the people of River State. And the people of River State should be able to take a stand and say, this is what we want. And by the way, if these uh, local governments now have elected leadership, and then the allocations are coming from the federal to the state, we are going to see an escalated level of development across the 23 LGAs. That is what we want to happen. We want bridges. We want roads, road networks. We want infrastructure. We want economic empowerment. We want social re-engineering across the grassroots. We want people to be able to, you know, fend for themselves because of the environment uh, that has been created. And that is, those are, that's the end point of this. This election is not about who wins or who loses. It's about the people. It is about creating a situation where the lives of the people are improved upon. And which is what the federal government is trying to do by isolating, you know, unlike before, isolating the funds accruable to the to the local governments so that they get direct to the people and they are able to benefit, you know, the dividends of democracy, the benefits of good governance at the grassroots level. That's what should happen. So all this effort to circumvent that process is not patriotic. No matter what colorations we want to put to them, it's not patriotic. And I think the police should also be able. I'm worried that Dr. Kayode Egbetokun, the Inspector General of Police, a doctorate degree holder, 
could you know allow an institution he is manning to descend to this level of hoodlum conduct hoodlum behavior i mean who does that how can we wake up in the night and we are finding police people trying to scale fence trying to get into a public facility without proper communication without proper approvals without proper authorization is that what he wants to do is that what he went to school to learn he is you know a prominent figure now in the security architecture of africa he should respect that and he should be able to rein in his men what is all this i mean the the, the reputation of the police is being eroded on a on a daily basis is that what he wants to do there are some of his predecessors that, that as much as people don't like the police they respect those ig's and the abubakar and the rest of them they you know discharge their duties creditably and up till now some of us have huge respect for them kayode egbetokun should be able to rise to the occasion you know he should rise to the occasion rein in his men it's time to get it right you know so this this order know, this order that uh, this order that was given for the police to withdraw this order that was given for the police to withdraw did it come from a better call or from the court okay why well, the police claims the courts and uh, they are acting on court orders and that the legal department advised them in river state to pull out from the election okay that's fine now going to access a public facility without proper authorization is that part of uh, compliance with the court order did the court say you should not turn to a hoodlum is that what the court said i mean for god's sake this is the lead agency for internal security why are they behaving this way it's very unfortunate look at the man on your screen till tomorrow nigerians respect him this man was there on the saddle for three years there was no armed robbery operation in any highway in any part of nigeria and i'm not talking of several other innovations he brought on board till today we respect him what is the legacy that dr kayode botokun wants to leave behind when he exits the office because he's going to exit it one day when he leaves that place what will be said about him that he was culpable in the tension and crisis in river state is that the record he wants to keep for himself so he needs to rise to the occasion if these orders if this you know hoodlum behavior is not coming from him then he needs to call his men to order he needs to call his men to order he doesn't i'm sure he he needs to uh, you know step back from allowing a situation where the police will be culpable in creating a state of anarchy in river state because you know everything has an elastic limit if the people of river state have taken enough one day they may just turn around and say okay whatever will happen let it happen and if it means burning down the state let's burn it down will the police want to be responsible for that so it's time he rises to the occasion he is very learned he's very you know widely read you know and within the police architecture in africa as a whole he is highly respected what is he doing back home what is the example what is the legacy he's leaving behind okay what is this okay history? now let's let's what assume let's assume that the police is out uh, because no no legal um, department of the police will give that kind of advice and they don't check with the inspector general of police so if that order came it must have touched him as well he must have had a hand in it as well even if it's a conspiracy theory let him come and refute those claims but i think for now we can safely believe that he is in the know he might come and deny it but he should be in the know except he turns around today to say okay police you have to go there and protect the people but even with the presence of police, there's always uh, this fear that there will be uh, some kind of problems at the polling uh, centers. Now, what are the alternatives open to the rivers people that will give them the confidence to go to the polls and vote tomorrow? Okay, one is whether the police is there or not. Uh, but let me chip in before I go on so that I don't uh, lose it. Now, regardless of any court order we know that the constitution of the federal republic is the overriding law is the ground norm and that law provides mandates the police 
to be responsible for the security of lives and property across the length and breadth of Nigeria. And that is overriding of any court order. No court order is above the Constitution. So the police cannot also say, because a court said that they should not participate in an election, if something goes wrong, we will still blame them. If anything goes wrong in any part of River State tomorrow, we will still hold the police responsible. It will be a constitutional violation on their part. They need to take note of that. Whatever, whoever the people in their legal department should be able to take note of that. If anything goes wrong in River State, the people of River State will hold the police responsible. Their actions or inactions in, with respect to that will be a breach of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. They need to take note of that. That aside, the people of River State are ready to do their elections tomorrow. And for anybody in any community that will want to rise and try to constitute nuisance, try to circumvent or undermine security, I think that person will be doing it right in front of his king's men, his family members, his wife, his children, his brothers, his sisters, his fathers, his uncles, his aunts, his cousins, nephews, nieces, and all of that. Because this is not presidential election that is in a way detached. It's not governorship election that is in a way detached. This is grassroots. So your polling unit is even in front of your family house. So who wants to who wants to circumvent that? The people of River State, we have checked across the 23 LGAs. People have started traveling as early as yesterday to their hometowns from the urban area. You know, I'm speaking with you now from Boni. And the people of Boni, Boni is a scam. People are just asking, when are we voting? You know, in Boni Island, you get the same thing across other parts of the state. So the people are ready. But then, if the police will not provide security, one thing is sure, other security agencies will ensure, the Navy will make sure that the rivers are safe for the people of the state to travel around and do the election. The civil defense, as per a statutory mandate of protecting national assets, will also perform their duties. The Nigerian Army will not allow any good law, any miscreant, under whatever guise, to misbehave in any part of the states. So the other security agencies will do their work and will ignore the police if they decide to, you know, play the ostrich and, you know, uh, continue to devalue themselves. No wahala. But the other security agencies, you know, are actually ready to make sure that everywhere is safe and calm and for people to go about their normal, you know, activities and cast their votes and go to their houses peacefully. That's for sure. You know, if you check, uh, you will have a correspondent in River State. You can also ask, you know, for us, at Pristina Report, we have checked all 23 LGAs and everywhere is calm. And people are ready to cast their votes, regardless of whatever the police wants to do or say. How, how many political parties are even participating in this election? PDP is crying foul, uh, APC is crying foul, and I'm wondering who is participating in the election. So who are those that are in the election, or at least a, a rough uh, number of the parties that are that are that have picked forms to contest in this election? Okay, well, I am not too sure, but I think the River State Independent Electoral Commission uh, said about 18 political parties are contesting. I am not too sure, but I think about 18. Now, coming to the frontline parties, APC, PDP, PDP officially is not contesting, so they are off. As per APC, the APC in the states, you know, through its chairman, Emeka Beke, has stated clearly that they are contesting. And uh, in my own local government here in Boni, you know, the candidates are already campaigning. Candidates for councillorship, for chairmanship, and all of that. I think uh, two days ago or so, the APC even gave uh, flags to their chairmanship candidates. So the APC is actually contesting. It's just the other... A small uh, number of people who are lining up behind uh, the PDP, you know, uh, under uh, the former chief of staff to the governor. 
uh, Tony Okocha, who are claiming that uh, they are not participating, but the APC officially is participating. You know, so so if you take out the PDP, maybe that should be like about 17 or 16 political parties contesting. And, uh, you know, everybody is upbeat about this election. Everybody is upbeat. It is time for the grassroots to assert itself in terms of access to governance, access to the opportunities the Nigerian state is providing through this election. So there is mass participation. You, you need to even see the rallies. You need to see the rallies, you know, in the different uh, uh, local governments. People are turning out a mass. You would think it's presidential or governorship election. So people are ready to contest this election. People are ready to support. People are ready to vote. You know, well, I know families that they even met together and like, okay, we are going to participate in this as a family, as, as a whole, and they are providing logistics for their for members of the family to be able to participate. So it will, it will really, it things. will really be interesting. Uh, this is the first time I think for me. I don't know if it has happened before that I'm seeing a sitting governor and his uh, political party is not participating in a local government election. It's usually that uh, his party will contest, and um, uh, more, more often than not, they will take all the seats in the state. But now PDP is not participating, and the sitting governor is PDP. Interesting times. Uh, so, uh, But I don't know. We, we may not have time to uh, talk more. We're just waiting and hoping that there will be peace enough for people to cast their votes. And then in the end, we will uh, hear what the result is and then be the, the judge for ourselves. But I hope that uh, the River State uh, Independent Electoral Commission is also in sync with what the state government is saying. Uh, they will not wake up in the morning and say that the court has said this, according to what the police is saying. I hope that they are following also and they uh, uh, they are they're falling in line and they are going to contest conduct this election in spite of everything. Well, uh, Mr. Jumbo, like I said, this is where we'll have to drop it. We are hoping to get an update after the elections tomorrow. Maybe uh, by Monday we should know who and who has emerged the winner and how peaceful or otherwise the election was and uh, we'll pick up the conversation from there. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always my pleasure to be here. Thank you. All right. Next time. Yes, next time. We'll be talking with Mr. Godswell Jumbo, publisher Christina Reports, and we were looking at River State. Uh, PDP, uh, APC, uh, Major Lee, uh, Wike, who is the FCT minister, and Fubara, who is the governor of River State. Uh, that's what the problem is. That's where the problem lies. Who is leading PDP in River State? So there's that fight. And now election will hold tomorrow. It's supposed to hold tomorrow, and the government the governor is insisting it will hold tomorrow. And the River State Independent Electoral uh, Commission has not said anything otherwise. So tomorrow we look forward to an election and we hope that it's going to be very peaceful. We'd like to thank you uh, for being a part of this program this morning as well. And we hope that you will rejoin us on Monday for another edition of the program. Happy weekend to you. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Bye for now.